Hello, I'm Bishop Reed, and I'm standing in the grand, recently renovated Cathedral of the Holy Cross in Boston. More than 150 years ago, the renowned church architect Patrick Keeley designed this Gothic revival structure, incorporating massive stained glass windows from Germany, putting stone from local Roxbury quarries, the hand-carved high altar, and the largest pipe organ in North America at that time. Together, they created a spectacular mother church for the Archdiocese of Boston. Today, the Cathedral of the Holy Cross stands as a living expression of God's love through its active parish community with its capacity of some 2,000 this cathedral church provides an important gathering place for Catholics living across the 144 communities of the archdiocese. And its facilities deliver critical social services to a growing population here in Boston South End with tremendous diversity and many young families, along with cathedral high school and middle school. Among the many treasures of this great cathedral church are a relic of the true cross upon which Jesus offered his life for us and restored artwork depicting those 14 stations of Jesus' passion and death. Join me now, if you will, in following the way of Christ, the way of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal Father, accept our prayer of thanksgiving for your beloved Son, our Savior and Lord. As we here today recall his sacred passion, send the Spirit of Christ into our hearts, we beg you, so that whether we pray or work, in all that we do, we might do it in union with Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Jesus, Lord, condemned, defiled, may we too be meek and mild as we tread your holy way. The first station, Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Again, the high priest began to ask him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? And Jesus said to him, I am. And you shall see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming with clouds of heaven. But the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? And they all condemned him as liable to death. Let us pray. All powerful and eternal God, for proclaiming the truth, your Son, Jesus Christ, is condemned to death by crucifixion. Stir up your love in our hearts so that we might be ever faithful to all that you have told us and fear nothing more than the loss of your friendship through sin. Amen. Now the cross, as Jesus bore it, has become for us who share it the jeweled cross of victory. The second station, Jesus carries his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. And Pilate said to the Jews, Behold your king. But they cry out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. And so they took Jesus and led him away bearing the cross for himself. Let us pray. Father in heaven, 
your son, Jesus Christ, still carries his cross in his persecuted brothers and sisters throughout the world. Make us feel the needs of all persons so that we might as readily help them as we would help Jesus himself. Amen. Weakened, prodded, cursed, and fallen, his whole body bruised and swollen, Jesus tripped and lay in pain. The third station, Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We read in John's Gospel, If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before you. If you were of the world, the world would love what is its own. Because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I have spoken to you. No servant is greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. Let us pray. O God, to free us from sin and weakness, your Son, Jesus Christ, embraced his fearful passion and crucifixion. Strengthen us to our baptismal resolutions by which we renounced sin and Satan, so that through the passion of this life sufferings, we might rise to new life of joyful service, free from all selfishness. Amen. Jesus meets his grieving mother, she who made the Lord our brother. Now the sword her heart has pierced. The fourth station, Jesus meets his afflicted mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. John in his gospel records, Now there were standing by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister, Mary of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple standing by whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. Let us pray. O blessed Lord, at your passion, a sword of sorrow pierced the loving heart of your mother, as Simeon had foretold. Grant that we who look back on her sorrows with compassion might receive the healing fruits of your sufferings. Amen. Simon stopped in hesitation, not foreseeing his proud station, called to bear the cross of Christ. The fifth station, Simon of Cyrene helps Jesus carry the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Matthew in his gospel records that when they had mocked Jesus, they took the purple cloak off and put his own clothes on him and they led him out to be crucified. Then they forced a certain passerby, Simon of Cyrene, coming from the country to take up his cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, a name meaning the place of the skull. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, help us to see in the sufferings and the shortcomings of our lives a share in your cross. Strengthen and console us in the belief that we bear all things in union with you who have taken upon yourself even our guilt. Amen. 
Brave but trembling came the woman, none but she would flaunt the Roman, moved by love beyond her fear. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We read in the Gospel of St. Matthew, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick, or in prison and come to you? And answering, the king will say to them, Amen, I say to you, as long as you did it for one of these, the least of my brethren, you did it for me. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, we feel your love and understanding in the consolation and support we receive from one another. Give us, we beg you, the courage and dedication to sacrifice and suffer with those who are in need, the least of your people. Amen. Prostrate on the dust he crumbled, flogged in body he resembled all our brothers poor and scorned. The seventh station, Jesus falls the second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. In the book of the prophet Isaiah, we read, it was our weakness that he carried, our sufferings that he endured. While we thought of him as stricken, as one struck by God and afflicted, but he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the punishment that makes us whole. By his stripes, we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you shared in our weakness and accepted our guilt. Grant us the favor of rejoicing over our human weaknesses so that in all we do, your strength dwelling in us may be shown to all others. Amen. May our sympathy for Jesus turn to those who here now need us. May we see Christ bruised in them. The eighth station. Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We read in the Gospel of Luke, there was following Jesus a great crowd of people, and among them were some women who were bewailing and lamenting him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Let us pray. Beloved Jesus, with tears of pity, these women of Jerusalem responded to you broken bruised and beaten on the road to Calvary. Deepen our faith, we beg you, so that we may see you in our brothers and sisters, bruised by our envy, beaten down by injustice, and broken by our greed and indifference. Amen. Jesus falls again in weakness, stumbling as we do to lead us through our sorrow and our pain. The ninth station. 
Jesus falls a third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. In Psalm 18, we read these words. I lie prostrate in the dust. Give me life according to your word. I declared my ways, and you answered me. Teach me your commands. Make me understand the way of your precepts, and I will meditate on your wondrous deeds. My soul weeps for sorrow. Strengthen me with your word. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you permitted your son to be weakened, crushed, and profaned, so that he might rise from the dead, freed from the ravages of sin. Help us to accept our weaknesses and failings as forerunners of our glorious resurrection in union with your Son. Amen. Stripped and jeered by his own nation, Jesus stood in desolation, guiding all he had to give. The tenth station, Jesus is stripped of his clothes. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. In the Gospel of Matthew we read, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall, but when he had tasted it, he would not drink. Then, after they had crucified him, they divided his clothes, casting lots. To fulfill what was spoken through the prophet, they divided my clothes among them, and upon my garment they cast lots. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, stripped of everything, you stood exposed to the jeers and contempt of the people whom you loved. Clothe us with a genuine love of others so that nothing we suffer may ever fill our hearts with hatred or bitterness. Amen. Pierced the hand that blessed and cured us, Pierced the feet that walked to free us, walked the hill of Calvary. The eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. In the Gospels we read, When they came to Golgotha, the place called the Skull. They crucified Jesus and the robbers, one on his right and the other on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Let us pray. Lord and Savior, you have told us that we too must accept crucifixion if we are to accept resurrection with you. Help us to rejoice in the sufferings that come with the fulfillment of our daily tasks, seeing in them the royal road of the cross to resurrection. Amen. Life eternal, death defiant, bowed his head, the world was silent. Through his death came life anew. The twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The Gospels relate it was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the curtain of the temple was torn in the middle. Jesus cried out with a loud voice and said, It is finished. Father, 
Into your hands I commend my spirit. Then, bowing his head, he died. Let us pray in the words that our crucified Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Stunned and stricken, Mary, Mother, in your arms was placed our brother, full of grace, now filled with grief. The thirteenth station the body of Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. John in his gospel relates that when the soldiers came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead, so that they did not break his legs, but one of them opened his side with a lance, and immediately there came out blood and water. Joseph of Arimathea, because he was a disciple of Jesus, although a secret one for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave permission. Let us pray. Beloved Savior, you returned to the Father all that he had given you so that he might restore all to you a hundredfold in the glory of the resurrection. Help us, we beg you, to give generously of ourselves in all that we do for you, so that like you, we may be made perfect in a new resurrection. Amen. Jesus, Lord, your gift accepted, in three days you resurrected. You did first what we shall do. The fourteenth station. Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. In Matthew's Gospel we read, Joseph of Arimathea took the body of Jesus and, wrapping it in clean linen, he laid it in his new tomb, which he had hewn out of rock. Then he rolled a large stone against the entrance of the tomb and departed. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, on the edge of sadness when all seemed lost, you restored to us the Savior we thought defeated and conquered. Help us, we beg you, so to empty ourselves of self-concern that we might see your hand in every failure and your victory in every defeat. These things we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Jesus risen, be our lover, in your food and in our brother. Lead us home to heaven with you. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We read in the Gospels, when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, 
they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth. He was crucified, and now he is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining me in prayer along the way of Jesus' passion and death. Model your life on the mystery of the Lord's cross.